Hmm, whatever. Look at the jump. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a quadratic equation using our special factoring techniques. So basically, there's two special factoring techniques that we're going to go over. The difference of two squares and perfect square trinomials. Um, and the basic, the best thing of, that I've noticed here is perfect square trinomials, perfect square, and difference of two squares. Square numbers is what's going to make the special factoring technique so special. So what I want you to understand here, or what at least I want you to notice, is when you're dealing with special factoring techniques, notice how the terms, the numbers that we're using are what we call square numbers, meaning those numbers you can take the square root of. So when you have to factor or you know when you have to factor an expression or solve an solve a, an expression using factoring, look for square numbers because when you have square numbers, we can apply the special factoring techniques. So the difference of two squares is basically going to be when you have a square term minus another square term. And the rule kind of goes like this. If you have a squared minus b squared, then you can factor this into a minus b times a plus b. And the reason why this works out is if you remember, if you were going to apply FOIL here, a times a is a squared. Negative b times b is negative b squared. And then the middle terms cancel each other out. That's why the difference of two squares is a binomial rather than a trinomial like my other examples. So basically, all we want to do to solve here, when we're looking into this, we want to say, you break this up into two binomials. And you say, all right, what is the square of my middle term, of my first term, which is x squared? Well, that's just going to be x times x. Then what is the square of negative 36? Now remember, it has to be negative. So therefore, one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. Well, that's going to be negative 6 and positive 6 equals 0. Now you just apply, apply the 0 product property. And what you'll notice is there's kind of a pattern, x equals x equals 6 and x equals negative 6. As you go ahead and solve, you get x equals 6 and x equals negative 6. In this case, we're going to do the exact same thing. Determine what two terms are going to multiply to give you your first term and what two terms are going to multiply to give you your second term. Now in this case, my x squared has a coefficient of 4, but that's a square number, so it works. So I can do 2x times 2x, because 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared. And then for my 25, since that's negative, 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. So that's going to be minus 5 and plus 5. Therefore, that gives me 2x minus 5 equals 0 and 2x plus 5 equals 0. If I go ahead and solve, I add the 5 divided by 2, x equals 5 halves. Subtract the 5 divided by 2, x equals a negative 5 halves. Okay? So you can see it's the same solution, one positive and one negative. In the next example here, now my first term is heavily loaded with a large square number, and then I have 1. But remember, 1 is a square number, because the square root of 1 is 1. So I just need to say, all right, what two terms multiplied here to give me 16x squared? Well, that's going to be 4x and 4x, negative 1 and positive 1. 4x minus 1 equals 0. 4x plus 1 equals 0. Add 1, divide by 4, x equals 1 fourth. Subtract 1, divide by 4, x equals negative 1 fourth. Okay? So that's going to be for your different, squ different squares um, or difference of two squares. Now what we have is we have square terms in the front and the back, but now you can see that we have a trinomial. Therefore, our middle terms are not canceling out like they did in the difference of two squares. Well, what this creates is perfect square trinomials, where actually our binomials are going to be exactly the same. And let me show you. So for this exact one, again, if I was going to factor this into two binomials, I would have x, two terms to multiply to give me x squared would be x times x. The two square numbers to multiply to give me 4 would be 2 and 2. Now, since we know that this gives us x squared, and we know that this is going to give us positive 4. However, for us to add to give us a negative 4x, both of these are going to have to be subtract, going to have to be negative. Think about it. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. x times negative 2 is a negative 2x. Negative 2x plus negative 2x is a negative 4x. So rather always than writing out your binomial as a times another binomial, we can just write it out as x minus 2 squared equals 0. Now, to go ahead and solve, you can take the square root of both sides here. And therefore, you'd have x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2, add 2, x equals 2. Okay. In this example here, now we have coefficient in the front, but that's OK. Again, you're just going to want to use the same thing. So I have 3x, so that would be 3x times 3x. That would be 9 times 9. And again, since my middle term, since my middle term here is positive, I know my two 9s are also going to have to be positive. Here, they were negative, so I wanted them both to be negative. So that's going to be add 9 to add 9. So therefore, it becomes 3x plus 9 
squared equals 0. To go ahead and solve, take the square root on both sides. You have 3x plus 9 equals 0. I'll subtract the 9, divide by 3. x equals a negative 3. In this example, hopefully you've kind of seen the little process here. We know this is going to create a binomial squared. Well, not always. You should get a little bit of practice. Your middle term is always going to be um, 2 times a times uh, c. Okay. If that was a squared and that's c squared, your middle term is 2 times a times c. So the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 1 is 1. So 2 times 10 times 1 is 20. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So therefore, I know I'm going to use 10x squared. My middle term is positive. So it's going to be plus 1 equals 0. Okay. Nope, that's not x squared. That's just 10x plus 1. Now I go ahead and take the square root on both sides. And I have 10x plus 1 equals 0. Then I will subtract the 1, divide by 10. And I can have x equals negative 1 tenth. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how um, you solve a quadratic equation using your special factoring techniques. Thanks.